Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to be doing some work on the X2 hull, of course. I'm going to mix up some fairing compound with microspheres and some pigment and uh, actually show you guys the application of it. I am also going to be doing a little bit of sanding but I probably won't put that on camera. Not too much of it anyway because it's kind of boring and tedious. Anyway, let's just get into this one and uh, see what happens. That's a lot of sanding. Alright YouTube, I just used micro spheres for the first time in my life and I have to say it is pretty weird stuff. It is so light and yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it really, but it kind of moves around more like a fluid. I didn't film any of it because it's kind of hard to deal with and I only had my phone out here. But I mixed some of it up, added some coloring, and yeah, added the microspheres to the epoxy, and did some fairing. So it's probably going to take at least one more application, but I did some of the uh, filling. There was a low spot through here where the fiberglass dipped in, and there was also a low spot here where the fiberglass ended and then the bare hole started. And then, of course, along the areas where I patched, I put a little bit of that stuff. It basically acts as a filler, like a uh, glazing putty for automotive stuff. Uh, where the cloth ends and the hull starts, there was a little step there, even though I sanded it down quite well. And then at this end, there are two steps because there is two pieces of staggered fiberglass. And then through this area right here, just, I guess it's below the exhaust, but we're upside down, so above the exhaust hole, um, there's a low spot where it meets, where the hull meets the front fill. So I, I basically tapered it in there. I'll probably need to do one or two more applications. I didn't go way over the top because I'm running fairly low in epoxy. So I need to wait for this stuff to harden up. I'm kind of worried that it won't harden just because I've never done this before and every time I work with a new material I'm worried that it won't harden. I mixed it according to the ratios on the containers and uh, recommended by Fiberglass for the 3M microspheres. This was 80 grams of epoxy with, I think, two, four, almost six ounces of microspheres uh, by volume, and then 2.5 grams. It was supposed to be 2.5 grams, but I used two grams of the pigment. I think I shot a clip with my iPhone after I put this stuff down and uh, the good news is that it did harden. I haven't tried to sand any of it yet but it seems to have pretty decent bonding characteristics considering everything comes off. Oh yeah, that has very nice flexibility. Might be be because it's not fully, fully cured yet. I'm editing the video and I saw this clip and I thought that I would show you guys that it is quite brittle once it's cured. Pardon the thunder in the background, we're having another storm. But uh, yeah, when you go to bend it now, it is quite brittle, so. I'm thinking I should probably wait a little bit for this to set up more before I try to sand it, but it seems as though it's, this is very, very light, very airy. So it seems like it's gonna sand quite easily. Uh, I still have a low spot here. <laughs> it's super easy to tell. When you use your hand over the top of it, it's like super, super obvious. But when I was putting it on yesterday, I was like, oh yeah, that's plenty thick. <laughs> but. I figured I was going to have to put a couple of coats on here anyway, so I'm not too upset about it.
Yeah, it's 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 not quite cured enough. <laughs> All right, I'll have to come back. I might put the heat gun in the hall and heat it up some. I've been playing around sanding a little bit and it's turning out way better than I thought. It almost seems accidental that the shape is taking place through here. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really have any exact plan except that I was going to put material on and sand it off and uh, the shape is basically revealing itself. There's a nice line through here. It doesn't look goofy or silly or anything. I know it's really hard to tell with all the different colors and shades and everything, but it actually looks quite good. I'm going to add at least one more coat of the Microsphere filler and extend this transition out a little bit here. I'm also going to extend it a little bit this way. I still have to fill in around here and I've got a low spot here. A little bit through here I'm going to extend this out this way just a little bit probably an inch and a half I've got to fill in through here a little bit there's a low spot here and again on this side I'm going to extend I think here I'm going to extend it out a little bit through here I'm going to extend it this way and here as well so yeah, it's coming along really nicely, way better than I thought it would. I thought I would take you guys on a journey with me of applying one coat of the fairing compound. I mixed it up and applied it for the first time yesterday. I had never used micro spheres before, or micro bubbles, and uh, it actually went quite well. Uh, I figured I would kind of show you guys going through the process, whether you're doing the first coat, second coat, or the 10th coat, the process is kind of the same. You want to make sure that uh, the surface is scuffed up well, so I used a 40 grit sanding pad to do all of the area, and then I blew it off with the compressed air. Because compressed air has, uh, a lot of the time it will have oil in it. Mine for sure has a little bit of moisture in it, uh, despite all the efforts that I've taken to get the moisture out of it. So what I like to do is use alcohol as the first step of cleaning. Uh, if this was extremely dirty, then I would uh, use soap and water to get it off, but uh, I've blown it off and I want to make sure that there's no moisture left in it when I apply the epoxy. So alcohol is really good at getting rid of moisture because it absorbs the water and then as it flashes off it takes the water with it. Um, so And it's also very good at cleaning. So I'm going to spray it down first with alcohol. Once I get it completely wiped off with alcohol. I'm then going to come back and uh, hit it once more with uh, acetone. Acetone is good at cleaning some stuff and alcohol is good at cleaning other stuff. So if you guys look closely, you can see I have a bunch of red marks on the hull. And that is because one of the problems that you can have when you're applying a fairing compound or any kind of a putty to the surface uh, there's a tendency for people not to prepare the surface properly that they're actually applying the material to. So when you're blocking this out, you use a big sanding block. You sand it down and you have a low spot here. And you can see that low spot quite well because it didn't get hit with the sandpaper. 
So that is a problem because if that low spot doesn't get hit with the sandpaper and you put on your next coat, you put on a skim coat of your fairing compound or body filler or whatever you're using, you put that on and it is now trying to bond to an area that wasn't sanded. So what I've done is I've come back over this with a 40 grit. The reason why I use the marker is because once you sand it, it's a lot harder to actually see those areas. I fully expect to have to do these areas one more time, but I will be really, really happy if this is the last coat. I'm not really sure how much epoxy I have. So I'm going to put the 20 grams in first and then put the 60. This is probably a horrible way to go about doing this, but I don't have any more big containers left. Two grams in total. So if we can actually get it to drip in, Got to make sure my scale doesn't shut off because if it does, it re zeros. Oh, there we go. It's staying at two. Let's just go for it. One thing about using the black pigment is you sure can tell where the stuff is. Like, do you guys see that? The, like the way it moves around, it's more like a, more like a fluid. You'll see when I mix it in with the epoxy. So I'm going to mix one at a time. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the way it's moving around, it's like flowing around. It acts much more like a, a fluid. I think I hear my cat. Where are you, buddy? Oh, you got stuck, did you? Hi. See if I can get a few minutes without interruption from my cat. I'm going to go on and add the second portion. I measured yesterday to see uh, the epoxy level in this cup where 80 grams was. So now I can use this cup to add three times that much. So that's twice the volume of the epoxy. If you're mixing up your epoxy to thicken it, like using cabasil or milled fibers, or in this case, microspheres, you wanna make sure that you have an epoxy with a decent pot life because you add the uh, hardener to it and you stir it for a minute, and then you have to add your coloring and you stir it for a minute and that takes up two minutes of your pot life and then you add the microbeads or your filler and you stir it for another minute that's three minutes of your pot life and then like you're if you're me oh my god you have a cat that you have to go and rescue and then he screams at the door because he wants your attention buddy you go hang out by yourself i'm busy you need time. Oh, also you're supposed to stir it gently so that you don't get air bubbles in it. I'm obviously not paying attention to those rules. Um, I'm going to be putting this stuff on fairly thin. Man, my cat's a pain in the butt. Hi buddy, did you get stuck for real? Oh, it's starting to rain now. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh boy. Alright, I've got this mixed up fairly well, I think. I've got two new uh, spreaders and I'm going to start applying this. Uh, when I put down the first coat, because I knew I was going to have to put a second coat down, I used a pretty old rough spreader because I didn't care too much about the surface finish. But uh, now because I'm hoping to get this stuff to lay down fairly nice and smooth, I'm going to use uh, brand new spreaders. Actually using two of them because I'm going to use the small one for doing some of the smaller areas and the big one for doing some of the bigger areas. So let's, uh, let's apply some, some of this stuff. What I like to do with this and with body filler when I'm applying it, and I don't know if it makes any difference or much of a difference, but I like to actually work it in. It makes me feel better. I like to actually take it and work it into the surface so that I can see that it's basically like, I guess I would call it wet out if it was fiberglass cloth, but I want to see it actually absorbing some into the material. So if you kind of put it on and scrape it off, it makes, I don't know if there's any truth to it, but I feel like it gets a better bond or has a better chance of bonding to the surface. So I'm gonna to put too much material down on purpose. Just a little bit. I'm hoping anyway. I thought I was putting too much on last time and it turns out I wasn't. And now what I'll do is I'll use the big spreader. I'm going to use it in this direction because it's already naturally curved that way. Wow, a lot of that material came off. Not that I know everything there is to know about doing fiberglass and bodywork, far from it. I'm pretty novice. But uh, you don't want to start in this area and then be leaning over this area to try to do the patchwork that you're doing. So I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. I'm going to start an inch and a half or so out from this spot. I want to make it so that this area tapers out more easily. So I'm going to add material to here. We can see them about three quarters of an inch from that red line. I put the red line there as an indicator so I would know where to start. Once again, I'm going to push the material in and kind of almost pull it off so that I can see that it's kind of sinking into the, the white stuff there. And then once I'm confident that I've got it well seated in, I will smoothen it out. There's a high spot here and a low spot here, but I, I want to go, instead of sanding this high spot off, because this is where one of the braces for the motor mount is, engine mount, I'm going to start back here. I might actually start back past this arrow and I'm going to try to basically use this material to give myself more of a more of a taper through here. So I'm probably going to build this up fairly thick. Use excessive amounts of material and then uh, just depend on sanding to get it to where I want it.
Hey, buddy. I'm going in just one direction now, trying to basically work the material in to see where exactly the high and low spots are. And now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and try to fill on the high side. Hopefully that worked. I'm going to try not to fuss with this too much because if I fuss with it too much, I'm going to end up pulling a bunch of material out and then not getting the desired effect. You shush. If you go outside, you're just going to scream at me out there. All right. So now I need to get some material from here back to here. I'm going to fill this whole area in. Oh, my stick fell in. Yes, I know, buddy. You're a pain. Yeah, you are. You're really good at being a pain. So good. All right, I'm working the epoxy in. I'm working the filler in. Try to make sure I get a good bond. James Bond. All right, it looks to me like that is pretty good fill. I've got taper from one side to the other. I would like to get it a little smoother than that, but I don't know. I might, I think I'll try this big putty knife or whatever you call this thing and uh, try my luck at it and see what happens. Huh? Well, I don't think it's any worse. <laughs> okay, do I need to put any through here? According to this, I wanted to put some between these lines. And that's why I marked it, because I definitely would have missed this. So yeah, apparently I wanted to try to taper from here. Through. Oh yeah, I can see there, I definitely needed some there. I'm basically going to push it in really well and then scrape it off. work it in as good as I can. Try to make sure that I get it really in there. I'm going to put down bulk of some material here and now I actually don't think that's quite enough. I can always scrape some off anyway. Let's uh, I actually need quite a bit of a longer putty knife for here, but I don't have one. If I don't have to do another application of putty on this, I would be really shocked. I'm ho hoping that it works out, that I don't need to, but yeah, I know I'm going to have to. All right, YouTube, I just finished up putting on the last bits. I have to say I'm glad I have an epoxy with such a long pot life because at the end by the time I got around to the front over here it was definitely starting to gel up 
and it was starting to get a little bit difficult to apply. I think the reason why I was able to use so much filler this time compared to the first time I did it is that when I did it the first time it was kind of hard to tell where the low spots were because everything was kind of the same color and yeah it was just a little bit tricky to see so I put on skim coat over some of the areas that I knew were low. Once I sanded it it became very clear where there's those low spots were. I marked them off with arrows and so I was able to build up more areas uh, fairly heavily so even though I did kind of less surface area with the second coat I put it on thicker because I knew where it needed to be thick. Does that make sense? Sometimes what I like to do is leave some of the filler on there and then you just peel it off when it's done but uh, that only works if you have quite a bit of material on there otherwise it just gets stuck to the surface and it's a real pain so I'm just wiping it off with a rag and it's coming off very easily right now I've been thinking about uploading more regularly and keeping the videos kind of short and there's basically two reasons for that the first reason would be to keep you guys updated on my progress and or the lack of progress and the second reason is that what's currently happening is that I shoot a bunch of footage and then it takes me forever to kind of go through and edit it. And yeah, it it's just uh, doesn't work out very well for me, especially when I'm busy. So I've got the bed plate mold stripped down and waxed. It's ready to put PVA on. I'm thinking about doing a veneer layer of carbon fiber just because it wouldn't be too, too wasteful. It would just show me kind of what it was going to look like. So basically, I'm going to be making a fiberglass bed plate, hopefully in the near future. And what I'm talking about now is basically putting one layer of carbon fiber. So when you look at it from the top, it actually looks like carbon fiber. It wouldn't actually add much to it other than looking cool. And it would uh, let me know how it's going to look in the mold. So that's kind of important to me. So I might end up doing that. Um, not sure when I'm going to get around to doing that, but, uh, tomorrow we are going to find out if the, uh, if I put enough epoxy on or filler on to the hull. Uh, unfortunately that's going to have to wait for the next video because I'm going to try to get this one uploaded for Thursday. So I guess that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.